Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Good Morning Black People with Morgan Reese. I'm your host, Morgan Reese. How are you guys doing on this thankful, thoughtful Thursday? I would like to welcome our amazing guest, Eric Dugan. He is uh, a mental health survivor. He can relate to people struggling with their mental health issues because he has been there. He reached the depths of his lowest depression and had the highest state of, of mania. He has struggled with a gambling addiction as well as many other struggles. And then on November, now at 17 years, I'm sorry, now 17 years from his last major mania episode and six years clean from his addiction, he lives his life of dreams by helping people with, uh, with his own struggles with mental health, homelessness, and addiction. He's an activist, he's an author, and he's a poet. So I would like for you guys to welcome my new, my new ph phenomenal, amazing guest, the resilient Eric Dugan to the show. Thank you guys. Welcome, Eric. It's Good Morning Black People with your host, Morgan Reese, author, author podcast, 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 online personality. Good Morning Black People discussing social views, today's news, and interviews. Subscribe today at YouTube at Good Morning Black People. Good evening, Eric. How are you doing this evening? There you go. I see that smile. How you doing? I am wonderful. I would like to say thank you again for joining my show this evening. I am so proud. I'm so humble. And I'm so grateful for you to take the time out your schedule to meet with me. So I did a little bio about you, but I want everyone to hear from you, your words, yourself. Tell us a little bit about Eric and what and why, who you are, and share about your, your talents, your gifts, and, and the, all the things you're working on in, in this 2023 year. Yeah, um, well, you did a great intro, so I appreciate that. A couple updates. I think I got to make a change of my website. It's been 20 years now, um, not 17 years, and I've been clean for, I think, eight years. Um, but other than that, that was a great job. Thank you. Um, so, Jordan Day, um, I'm a social worker now. Um, I help people that are um, homeless or, you know, homeless situations, find them permanent housing. I work for a nonprofit. We pay their rent for a period of time and then work on their goals so they can kind of go and, and take care of themselves, um, either through permanent assistance or just building up income and other things and their skills. Um, so I love it. I don't work anymore because I love my job. Um, it doesn't even feel like work anymore. Um, and I've been able to successfully discharge positively in the last year. I think it's like 14 or 15 people into their permanent housing and on their own now. Um, so that's why I do join a day. Um, I'm also a mental health professional. Um, um, she mentioned that I was a mental health survivor, but I became a mental health professional as well. Um, skill building, casework within um, group homes I've done in the past. And at night, I'm an artist. Um, and then I'm also a writer. She mentioned I'm an author. Um, so yeah, all those things combined kind of makes me who I am. But more than anything, I'm very authentic. Like I try to just be true to myself because um, if I'm true to myself, then you know the message will get out the right way. So I, I check myself constantly uh, to make sure I'm doing that. Wow. And I, I come from a family of mental health, so I know exactly all about that. You are stronger than than people probably even know that you are. And that's a, that's a testament to God's grace of um, how, how far he's taking you. And by you giving back through social work, that's an amazing thing. Because a lot of places don't have those programs. If they do, they kind of fall by the wayside or you get someone who doesn't have their heart into it. They're just doing it. As you said, you love your job. You don't even consider it as a job. Yeah, and yeah. And I agree. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are in for the wrong reasons, but there are also a lot of people that care. So it's kind of maybe, a, I don't know, maybe a 50-50 split. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, by the graces of God, I'm here. Like um, she mentioned about 20 years ago, I went through a traumatic experience that would have killed me if it wasn't for the graces of a higher power. So I, that's one of the reasons why I try to do all the things I'm doing now, because I think I owe it as like, I mean, I do it for myself too, but also for like, Payback, if that's, I don't know if that's the right word, but payback for giving me that chance. So, well, if you um, do you mind sharing some of your story or what you've been through so you can kind of maybe help others or give a little, you don't have to share a lot of it or give a little synopsis of it just so people can understand. Um, because you never know who else is out there maybe needing some help and guidance too, and your story yeah. can help them. Well, okay, so I actually would just do a poem. Um, which will kind of talk not really about that experience I had 20 years ago, so say, 
but more about my beliefs on being diagnosed bipolar. I have a little bit different belief than I think a lot of people do, and it's something I'm writing more about. Um, you can find this poem um, on my blog, either in video where you can see it with a band, because I do play, do this poem a lot with a band at a different places, um, actually with the song Poetry Say Yes behind it. Um, and then it's also on my blog in written form if you want to re read the words. Uh, but this talks a lot about the connection between spirituality, bipolar, art, all those things put together and see a lot of people um, think of being diagnosed bipolar is a negative thing, but actually my mind is the gift I was given. Um, so that's kind of what this poem talks about. Um, not really a lot of, you know, there's all, all the things you got to care for, for sure. Um, but there's also positive things you get by having the mind you have. So we'll just go on the poem. You ready? I'm ready. Let's all do right. it. My mind is a gift, but they define me as manic depressant or bipolar. I'm told I have a disorder, told that I'm ill, that I'm less than, not as good as. They say my mind comes with restlessness, rapid speech, poor judgment, hallucinations, unrealistic goals, hopelessness, sadness, or suicidal thoughts. With this list, how does one remain hopeful? How does one become positive? If I listen to what they say I am, I reflect to merely exist, exist like the millions that rot in group homes or gay programs, or exist like the ones that fight to survive in psych wards. Or worse, I will cease to exist. If I listen to what they say, and they will profit as my genius stays tucked away, my gift will be lost in a large sea of labels. Society will knock me down with uppercuts more wicked than Mike Tyson. How do I even get up off the canvas if I listen to them? If they tell me that I'm ill, that I'm less than, not as good as, nowhere in their manual can I find the benefits of my mind. But I know better. My mind is elevated beyond the comprehension of the ones labeled normal. My mind is not ill. My gift from God is this mind, the same mind that they call ill. It's ironic, isn't it? If you want to get in touch with God, get in touch with the diagnosed. Spend a day looking past our madness and into, their, into our messages. If you want to get in touch with God, get in touch with us creative minds that often are also diagnosed as ill. God speaks to us through them, whether it is paintings, poems, a musical masterpiece, or any other art form. When people leave it all and go home to judge the very same minds that created the art. It's ironic, isn't it? They do not recognize who we are. We, the diagnosed, come from a long bloodline. We see the meaning behind the curtain. We are broken free. We, the diagnosed, are the teachers. Let us remind you like a Beethoven composition or Ernest Hemingway novel. Let us paint the pictures your mind cannot help you travel to a more spiritual world, expose you to something more beautiful, more grand, a world more like us. We are not less than, but more than. We feel, we see, and we hear what others cannot. Our minds are not ill. We are creative genius that are judged for one thing while admired for another thing. You should know it is impossible to reap the benefits of the mind without reaping the struggles of the mind. Like yin and yang, we are brilliance and insanity, creative and destructive. We are the uniqueness that existed before time. And we feel pain as existence has been left behind. And sometimes this world gets the best of us and we lose control. But with the right mindset, we become the greatness our minds were designed to be. If only we do not listen to what they told us we are supposed to be. That's it. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Eric, whoo. I got to be quiet for a minute. So, <laughs> appreciate it. Believe it or not, that was amazing. God, thank you. Careful. Thank you. I have, thank I have you. both both of my parents were bipolar. Are bipolar. Wow. Okay. My dad passed, unfortunately. But my I'm mother, sorry. I grew up with her as, as a bipolar schizophrenic person. And wow. okay. I'm glad that I, I, I told you, God got a plan in everything he does. Yeah, God okay. got a plan. And I mean, it's it's like, that's why I try to spin it like that because the problem is a lot of people are diagnosed bipolar or schizophrenic or whatever else. And all they hear is all these negative symptoms and labels and all these other things. And what it does it creates that truth in your mind. And then you start believing that your mind is ill and it's wrong and all these things. And like society has it a little upside down as far as I believe, like the people that are quote unquote normal, they're kind of in their own illusion, like, you know, blinders on, where people that have this diagnosis can hear and see so many different things. 
and they just curate it. Now, I want to be clear, like, I do understand that having this mind comes with things that I really have to care for. So I take medicine, um, low dose, but I take medicine. But more than medicine, I, you know, I make sure that I exercise and um, write and get outside and have interactions with people, like all these things that you need to create that healthy bond that is even more important when you have the mind that you have. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Whew. You, you said a mouthful because you are giving um, people in the world a, a better understanding of a person who, who's bipolar or schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. Because as you said, there's a stigma attached to the label. Um, the only people who really won't do that is people who truly love that person and, and take the time to see beyond their mental situation, see beyond that and look at the person themselves and learn the person and love the person themselves. Um, because that diagnosis is not them them are is a part of that diagnosis and you explained it right God. yeah and i took like you know from the time like even coming out of the hospital when i had that traumatic experience and doctors were trying to tell me i'm ill i refused it, right i rejected that i was ill so no no this was too spiritual there's too many things that went around yeah i mean you know it was bad but like there was a lot of spirituality experience that went with that and i was like no there's too much truth here um, I'm not ill. Um, and I used that mindset the whole time um, and created, like, trying to be positive with my mind. And like I said, cared for all the things because I know my mind is more open, which is makes me susceptible to some of those negative things. Um, so I just try to keep that outlook. And I, I struggle at times. Right. Like, you know, I, I mean, we all do. Um, that doesn't mean you're ill, you know. Um, but, yeah, I have struggles like everyone else. But. I try to always look inside and introspect and, you know, keep an awareness about what I'm doing and what I'm not doing and what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. Like I do a lot of introspection to keep me on track. Um, and I'm so actually, I mean, maybe a good place to put like it's a little early on. I don't know if I always mention this that much because it's so early on, but I am actually writing a book about this. It's more detailed than that poem. Put it out there. Um, <laughs> early stages. Well. It'll be a while, but if you follow my website at powerfulwords.com, um, I am consistently now writing a blog, not always about mental health, some other topics, but you can follow me there. Um, and, you know, later you can get the book. And if you subscribe to my mailing list, little off subject, well, not really. Um, I have a video that you'll receive that will create an organized structure on how you can go after your dreams and visions. So, which is what I use myself. Yes. Yes. And so you said you're an activist. So what are you, um, what, do you, what uh, project or what are you, what are you doing in your community where, um, I know you say you're a writer, you're an author, you're a poet and you're an activist. So what, what are you doing in the community, community where um, you're supporting or who are you supporting besides with your job and with your um, with things that you already have going on right now? Yeah, so activism is a lot of things. So one, my job is activism. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, like it was, I've done a lot of different things and I just step in where if it's something that I'm passionate about and I have the time to do, and just some examples is I've talked to leg legislators uh, in Virginia making racism a public health crisis in Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, I've done protests. I've talked to, you know, either done poems at protests or just was part of protest or spoke at protest. Um, God, there's just a number of things. So um, that's a definitely a subject that I'm passionate about, too, is is equality and looking at people not from the color of their skin. Um, actually, just a little quote from King Selassie, which is up on my wall. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to have to remember it real quick. Um, Until the day Ah, no, I might forget. Uh, until the uh, until the cover man's skin is of no more significance than the cover man's eyes, there will hey. be war. Right? A lot of people may have heard that in Bob Marley's song, but that's King Selassie's. Yeah. Bob Marley used it. But um, but yeah, so that's important to me. Um, you know, anything that have to do with that or mental health, I talk a lot about spirituality and religion too. Um, but so I just step in, like, there's another organization, um, Community 5050, that I try to help when I can, 
Um, and we, we kind of partner a little bit with the, I work for home again, and, and we've done some partnerships there, feeding the homeless on Thanksgiving and, and stuff like that. So just where you can step in, like, I, you know, I don't know, like you asked about a project. Um, I, I don't know if I have like, other than my main core job that I have one now, but I just, I just step in when it feels necessary. Well, I need you to do me one more favor. You got to give me okay. another one. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Um, let's see. Whatever that beautiful brain gives you. <laughs> well, okay. Well, we've been talking about, you know, racism and stuff like that. Um, I haven't done this poem in a long time. I guess that's what I'm a little, a little hesitant, but I, I think I can, um, I think I can get it. So as long as they don't have any, any, uh, Curse words in it. <laughs> no, no, there's no cuss, there's okay, no curse great. words, and it's about diversity and unity. Um, so it's just a matter if I haven't done it in a long time, so making sure I can remember it um, clearly. But um, but it's a it's a poem. I was I was actually um, commissioned to write a poem reacting to one of the murals in Richmond. In Richmond, Virginia, we're known for murals. They're all over Richmond. Everywhere you go, there's going to be these paintings on these buildings and these different things. And there was a project mending walls where there was a series of walls. I don't know the number exactly, but there was a series of walls that were designed or created in response to social justice. Uh, um, I think it started after the uh, George Floyd incident. Um, And this poem that I did, I was commissioned to write a poem reacting to one of these murals. We don't have the mural in front of us, um, but you can see the mural if you're in Richmond. on the on the side of Four Cyber Cafe, or you can go to the website Mending Walls um, uh, website, and and you can find the poem with the video and the mural as well. So we'll just try that one. Okay. In the heart of Columbia, Maryland, there's a 14 foot civic monument of a tree, where the abstract gold human figures as branches. Their feet are connected as one, one community, one family. On the other end of these human form branches, their arms are unlocked, raised wide open to the sky to represent individual growth. This was my childhood city, where groups of teenagers looked like a garden in the spring, where interracial relationships were as common as dominoes in Cuba. The city blended as color leaves in the fall, intentionally inclusive, represented by a sculpture named the People Tree. Now, many years later, in the heart of the art district, in the place I now call home, Richmond, Virginia, I stand in front of a mural an expression of the same hope I had as a child. Two artists, one white painter, one black painter. Each their own childhood, each their own eyes to the world. They painted from a different place, but together they were able to create this multicolored mural. Purple, pink, yellow, orange, blue, red, black, green, orange, and brown. To one, it was dangerous to hold it to a gun. To the other, he had to worry about the fear of a large dart. One can see himself inside the Jetsons, while the other notices no one looks like him. One can enjoy the Dukes of Hazzard, while the other notices or the the other sees nothing but Confederate flag. Their brushes stroke from a different place. But through conversation, they're able to bridge the distance between to the last bit of paint tribe. Now two worlds exist on the same walls. They confronted difficult questions. Like, what is the meaning of the Confederate flag on the General Lee? Like, why are there no black people in the future of the Jetsons? Why did that black kid get shot for playing with the toy gun? In America, this problem is as old as the red, white, and blue in the flag. Roots are dying from generations of ignorance. A world that has been barely tired. Even further removed from acceptance, insurmountable ways from brotherhood. A world that breaks the roots and poisons the leaves of children's trees. Such as it did to mine when I first left Columbia for a segregated Marine Corps. But now, in Richmond, Virginia, and other places around the world, walls are beginning to be mended. The reconciled past and confront the present. Because the more we know each other, the less we fear. The less we fear, the more we feel part of the same tree. Trunk is its base, root strong in the core, with fully developed branches with colored leaves as beautiful as the mountains in November. Connected like these two artists on the wall, linked by a pink and light blue cloud, with the hope that one day the color of man's skin is of no more significance than the color of man's eyes. When that happens, each of us has the ability to grow the greatest self. So come talk to me and bring me back to that people tree. That's it. Thank you. Wow. Hey, you're the man. You are the man. <laughs> now I got to find that mural. Look it up. As soon as I got the phone with you, and I had to go to Richmond and, uh, and visit that mural because, wow. Yeah, if you go to the website, um, there's a place on there um, that the actual, because they video, they recorded us um, doing the poem, and then you could see it with the mural and the poem together. 
Uh, but the Miro's out there too. I um, mean, you could scan your phone at the Miro and it will pop up the website and you could see all that stuff. So it was really cool. It was like one of the most, honestly, it was one of the most honorable um, projects that I've been part of because it was activism, but I was doing poetry and it also talked about where I grew up, Columbia, Maryland, which is near and dear to my heart and Richmond, Virginia, which is near and dear to my heart. And it brought all those things together because I grew up we used to call it Fantasy Island because it was just different. It, like, wow. it was really different. Like, the groups you see were always different, you know, cultures and races. And it was it was designed, it was purposely designed that way, Columbia, Maryland was. It was created with that in mind to be inclusive of all people. Um, and it was amazing to live there. And then you leave and it's like, wow, this is not how the world is. <laughs> So like things have changed in this neighborhood. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like I'm taking my rose colored glasses off. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's like, you know, I'm in the now. Marines. <laughs> I'm in the Marines and they say, you know, Marines, they they use they try to say you always see the color green. And I guess there's some truth that when you're working together or whatever, but like when you're off, it's like different worlds segregated. And for me, I was like, oh my God, where what is this? I don't understand this. <laughs> You know, like, look, everybody's my brother. I don't even care what color you are. And right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. You know, so I was I was blessed to grow up there though. Um mm. definitely blessed to grow up there, but it was such an honor to do this project. Um Roscoe Burnham's, which is the uh poet laureate of Richmond, it was his project called If These Walls Could Talk. He hired 10 poets to do 10 different murals. He selected this one on purpose because we had some conversations. It was such an honor. Wow. Where is there anything else you would like to share with the world that you want them to know, some positive trinkets or anything that that's pressing on your heart that um, I know this world right now is back in chaos again. <laughs> Actually, chaos never ended, but it's like it, it's quiet for a minute and then it's like the quiet before the storm. Is there anything that you would like to share with, with everyone that's watching um, a positive trinket or something that's near and dear to your heart that you want to share with everyone? to um to know who Eric is or know about Eric or what Eric is passionate about. Love. Hey. You know, like you're talking about um, you know, the world and it's it's a lot of not love. Um and I have to remind myself some too, you know, I'm human, so sometimes I fall short, but just loving each other and that that's a lot. That's not just a feeling, but like a choice to like be all the things that loving it is. Um, that's what I try to do in my in my work, in my poetry, and um, everything else. Um, the other thing I would say, along with just the more love you give, the more you're gonna receive. I, you know, and then the other thing I would say is if we all looked instead of pointing fingers, which is easy to do, if we all looked inside, even if things aren't going our way, or even if people are doing wrong things, which happens, just look this way inside the more you do that work inside the better off you'll be because you know we all like i like to say it's like a car uh like a poker game we're all given different cards at birth and you know some may have better odds than others based on traits like skin color gender mental and physical capabilities but like if you play the cards you're dealt those are the cards you're dealt if you play them and you look inside you you can get where you need to get even when the world is doing wrong things, which we know it does. <laughs> well, you made a good point about those fingers pointing, because I always say when you're pointing a finger at somebody else, you still got three other ones that's pointing back at you. <laughs> I like that. I, mean, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Somebody's right. pointing a finger at you. Guess what? Tell them. You still got three one, three other ones that's pointing right back at you. So why yeah, you yeah. Throwing, why you trying to throw rocks at my glass house? Look at yours. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, I yeah, I got I got some rocks. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're all human, and that's why I try to just keep looking inside because I want to keep doing that work because I fall short too. So yeah. Well, I have a slogan this year. 2023 is all about me. So 2023 is all about me. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's for um, sure. Let no one stop you, no one slow you down. Say, look, I'm a, I'm a, g finish that book. I need, I yeah. need, I need to look at you on, on Instagram within the next six months, and you say you start putting excerpts. Start telling everybody, 
Because I believe it or not, I wrote a book myself and I held in my book for 10 years, Eric. 10 wow. years. Yeah, I've held this book for so long. And <laughs> it's going to come now because, like I mentioned earlier, that on my website, if you subscribe to my mailing list, you'll get a little video. Like, I'm going to turn it real quick. This, this board right here, you can't mm. really see what's on it, but that board. Your vision. Um, board is my magic board. So, you know, I really, every day I'm looking at that board and moving things so I can make sure I stay consistent is which something that I fell short with in the past. We all do, you know, life happens, but I make sure I'm doing the work because like you said, it's all about me. And that's what I'm trying to focus on is get all those goals done that I want to get done. I believe you're going to do it. I'm not, I'm not listening to anything less than when next time I hear from you, I want I you to say, guess what girlfriend? It's almost halfway done. I submitted to. A, I found a publisher that's working with me, an editor that's working with me, and and this is the title. And you, I'm gonna be seeing you blow up Instagram, social media with it, and your website. Because Eric, you got this. I promise you got this. I appreciate I, you. I, oh yeah. I, yeah. I, I, kind of, I, think, I know I have it. I you know the I man. You the it's man. so nice to hear it from someone else. You know. Oh, I mean? yeah, you the man. We can, all, we can all hear that. You know, we yeah. all need to hear that. We have to lift each other up. We have to lift each other yeah. up. I'm yeah. not going to step on you. I wouldn't want you to step on me. It's all about growth. No matter what chapter you are, what path you're on, it's all about growth. Yeah, and keep and, going with this podcast. Like it looks like you know you're being consistent. You get you getting people in and doing and talking about a lot of good things. So yeah, you know, keep you. it going. I would like to say thank you again for coming on. You are. It's been a pleasure. It's been a blessing. It's been an honor. Mm -hmm. You, man, you are phenomenal, Eric. Don't let Thank anyone you. else tell you anything different. Go ahead and finish that imagine that imagine board. Make it uh, a reality board. So you yeah, right. what I would suggest you do take half of that. And this is my reality. And these are things I'm still working on. Oh and no, the ahead. things that are done are, are over to the, there's a lot of done. Like, okay. There's a lot, done. Done. There's a lot of reality <laughs> over there. Like I move them over all the time. So every week I have a bunch of cards Put that book on the other side. Put that book yeah. on the other side. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you what here. I did. I'm gonna tell you this real quick what I did. I thought about what I'm gonna do. And I said, you know what? Even if I'm not going to do it, if I start putting the action in, it starts happening. I action. put the action in of this book, it came. Yeah, it steps. And That's step, it. Like a lot of people, like in me in the past, have get overwhelmed with looking too far out. Just take those steps. That's what this board tries to do. Is just here's the steps. This is what I need to do this week. So let's just do that and not worry anymore. I have my vision board, but I don't worry about it anymore because I'm working on those steps. So like you said, action steps. Well, Eric, tell everyone how they can find you and where they can lo locate you and reach out to you and 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 where you are uh, as far as your social media path, how they can get in contact with you, share that information with everyone. Yeah, thank you. So, um, and thank you for having me too. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, no worries. Um, so Instagram and Facebook, I'm Power From Words 804. That's Power From Words 804. My website is powerfromwords.com. Um, that's where my blog and other things are. Um, and you can also contact me by email at edugan at powerfromwords.com. That's everything. Thank you. I, pre I appreciate you so, so, so much. I promise you. I would like to know if you want to come back on the show for me. Yeah, I'll come back. All right, then. All right. That, that's all I need to hear. We'll, we'll <laughs> schedule a later date. Yeah, but yeah. guys, Eric Dugan, Power From Words. He's a writer, an author, a poet, an activist. He's doing it all. And he's a survivor of many things of life. But he's a survivor of, of things that people say that you're not supposed to survive from. He's doing it. He's a, a true testament. Hey, hey, guess what? I don't care what they diagnose me with because I'm stronger than it. I'm stronger than my <laughs> diagnosis. I am who I am on purpose. So 2023 is all about who again, Eric? That's me. That's it. <laughs> put, that, put that on your vision board put that on your yeah, imagination, yeah, yeah. imagination board 2023 is all about Eric Dugan I hear that I appreciate you again for, for joining my show and guys thank y'all for tuning in check out this man on Instagram on his website please follow him on his website again share your website one more again powerfromwords.com powerfromwords.com yeah. and he's from the 804 he's from Richmond Virginia That's I right. need to come to Virginia because I haven't been to Virginia in a while so I promise you when I come through I'm going to hit you up and see if we can get together and we yeah. can put some things together. And I look forward to working with you later on. And I definitely can't wait for you to come back. When you come back, you be talking about that book, Eric. Yeah, we're going to talk about all this stuff that's done. We're not going to talk about the same, right? <laughs> we're going to talk about that book. We're going to talk about that book and how, yeah, you, how far you want to progress is because I, I have faith in you. I believe in I you. I trust it. you. You're going to do this. You got this. 
Well, guys, again, thank you for joining my show. I appreciate everyone for tuning in. Again, check out Eric Dugan. He's a resilient survivor. He's a resilient, strong man. And he's standing by, standing by all of us, standing with us and standing by all of us, no matter what your color of your skin is. It's good to hear someone else from another race, another culture that says, guess what? I stand with y'all because guess what? I don't believe in no color because I came from military. It was all green. And he's, I'm saying thing, it's all green. Green is money. Green is love. Red is love. So it is what it is. Guys, thank y'all again for joining my show. I appreciate y'all. Stay tuned for my next show tomorrow. I promise you, it's on and popping. Thank you for joining Good Morning Black People with Morgan Reese. I'm your host, Morgan Reese. And thank you again for, for joining me, Eric. And I look forward to you coming back on the show. You have a great evening. Please be safe and be blessed. It's Good Morning Black People with your host, Morgan Reese. Author, 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 podcast, 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 online personality. personality. Good morning, black people discussing social views, today's news, and interviews. Subscribe today at YouTube at Good Morning Black People. I'm Morgan Reese, inviting you to tune in weekly for some empowering, enlightening, and embracing conversations to kickstart your day on Good Morning Black People.